Then they all took Jesus to Pilate and began to bring up charges against him. They said, We found this man undermining our law and order, forbidding taxes to be paid to Caesar, and setting himself up as Messiah King. Pilate asked him, Is this true that you're King of the Jews? Those are your words, not mine, Jesus replied. Pilate told the high priests and the accompanying crowd, I find nothing wrong here. He seems harmless enough to me. But they were vehement. He's stirring up unrest among the people with his teaching, disturbing the peace everywhere, starting in Galilee and now all through Judea. He's a dangerous man, endangering the peace. When Pilate heard that, he asked, So, he's a Galilean, realising that he proper properly came under Herod's jurisdiction, so he passed the book to Herod, who just happened to be in Jerusalem for a few days. Herod was delighted when Jesus showed up. He'd wanted for a long time to see him because he'd heard so much about him. He hoped to see him do something spectacular. He peppered him with questions. Jesus didn't answer not one word, but the high priests and religion scholars were right there saying their piece strident and shrill in their accusations. Mightily offended, Herod turned on Jesus. His soldiers joined in, taunting and jeering. Then they dressed him up in an elaborate king costume and sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became thick as thieves. Always before, they kept their distance. Then Pilate called in the high priests, rulers and the others and said, you brought this man to me as a disturber of the peace. I examined him in front of all of you and found there was nothing to your charge, and neither did Herod, for he has sent him back here with a clean bill of health. It's clear that he's done nothing wrong, let alone anything deserving death. I'm going to warn him to watch his step and I'll let him go. At that, the crowd went wild. Kill him, give us Barabbas. Rabbis had been thrown in prison for starting a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate still wanted to let Jesus go so he spoke out again but they kept shouting back crucify him crucify him. He tried a third time but what for, for what crime I found nothing in him deserving death. I'm going to warn him to watch his step and let him go. But they kept at it, a shouting mob, demanding that he be crucified. And finally they shouted him down. Pilate caved in and gave them what they wanted. He released the man thrown in prison for rioting and murder and gave them Jesus to do whatever they wanted. As they led him off, they made Simon, a man from Syrian, who happened to be coming in from countryside carry the cross behind Jesus. A huge crowd of people followed along with women weeping and carrying on. At one point Jesus turned to the women and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves for your children. The time is coming when they'll say, Lucky the, the woman who never conceived. Lucky the woman the wombs that never gave birth, lucky the breasts that never gave milk. They'll, they'll start calling to the mountains, fall down on us, calling to the, the mountains, cover us up. If people do these things to a live green tree, can you imagine what they'll do with the dead wood? Two others, both criminals, were taken along with him for execution. When they got to the place called Skull Hill, they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Dividing up his clothes, they threw dice for them. The people there stood staring at Jesus and the running ladies made faces, taunting him. He saved others. Let's see him save himself. The Messiah of God, ha! Huh? The Chosen One, ha! Huh? The soldiers also came up and poked fun at him 
making a game of it. They toasted him with sour wine. So you're the king of the Jews. Save yourself. Printed over him was a sign. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging alongside cursed him. Some Messiah you are. Save yourself, save us. But the other one made him shut up. Have you no fear of God? You're getting the same as him. We deserve this, but not him. He did nothing to deserve this. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He said, don't worry, I will. Today, you will join me in paradise. Jesus' death. It was about the sixth hour and darkness came over the whole land. The ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his lust. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching him. Jesus' burial. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented <coughs> their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to, the, to Pilate, he asked for his Jesus body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb, cut in the rock, in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The woman who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Amen.